Joe Biden forgets the name of his own Secretary of Defense and that Pentagon-shaped building where the guy works. More and more woke leftists are anguishing over their white privilege. Plus, members of pro-life evangelicals for Biden are upset because Joe Biden is not pro-life. All that and more, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden because there is a lot of talk out there and the word is spreading even among left-wing members of the media. They're asking, when is Joe Biden going to hold a full-on solo press conference? No president in over 100 years has gone this long without a press conference. People are taking notice. People are asking questions. Even members of the media at the latest White House press briefing, Jen Psaki was asked, when is Joe Biden going to have a press conference? Here's her response. Well, first, as all of you know, the president takes questions several times a week. Uh, he took questions actually twice yesterday, uh, which is an opportunity for the people covering the White House to ask him about whatever news is happening on any given day. We look forward to holding a full press conference in the coming weeks before the end of the month. Something in the coming weeks before the end of the month. That's what they're doing. They're pushing it off as far as they can. They probably wouldn't want to have one at all. But the media are asking, and you know the Biden team has to be freaking out. They have to be wondering, oh my gosh, how is that going to go? What are we going to do? Here's Jen Psaki saying why Joe Biden hasn't had a press conference yet. But this president came in uh, during uh, a historic crisis, two historic crises. And I would say that his focus, again, is on getting recovery and relief to the American people. And he looks forward to continuing to engage with all of you. Interesting how former President Trump was able to handle those same crises that Joe Biden is supposedly handling. And President Trump was able to give press conferences, too. But we all know what's going on, folks. The Democrats propped up someone who can't handle the job. We saw it during the campaign, how he was losing it, how he couldn't remember words to the Declaration of Independence, and on and on and on. And we've seen the trend. It has gotten worse. That's why they kept him hidden during the campaign. But now he has to be out there. And when he is, when he is, you can tell that something is going on. Here's a recent appearance from just this week with Joe Biden in D.C. visiting a shop and looking like he doesn't know what's going on. And then if I could just... Look at that. He's just looking around like he doesn't know what's going on. Someone from the media even asked him a question. They stepped up and asked, is there a crisis at the border? No response. Nothing at all. Members of his team shut things down, get people to move on. There's no other questions asked, but he doesn't look like he knows what's going on. Then in a speech this week, he was talking about justifying his terrible coronavirus relief bill. And here's what he tried to say. One more thing. The vast majority of economists, left, right, and center, from Wall Street to the, to the private, private uh, 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 economic uh, uh, polling initiatives, the economists, as I said, left, right, and center, say, in addition to the needs the people have, we need this to grow the economy. All right, first of all, we don't need this bill to grow the economy. That's absolutely 100% not true. The February jobs report exceeded all expectations because people are getting back to work. Travel and hospitality, that was the main addition, the main gains of jobs. It shows people are getting out there. They're going back to work, they're traveling, they're doing more. That is the best way to grow the economy. Just get people back to work. But here's the topper. Here's the topper of all. Joe Biden was giving a speech and he tried to name his defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, and where that guy works, the Pentagon. But in his statement, he couldn't get out either one of them. I just want to thank you both. And I want to thank the, sec the, the uh, former general. I keep calling him general. But my my uh, the guy who runs that outfit over there, 
I want to make sure we thank the Secretary for all he's done to try to implement what we've just talked about. The guy who runs that outfit over there, meaning Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, working at the Pentagon. Joe Biden couldn't even say it. You could tell he was trying to remember, and he just couldn't do it. Folks, this is a bad situation, and it is clear this is why he hasn't held a solo press conference, why he hasn't gotten out there except for these very small scripted events because he can't remember what's going on, and this will just reveal it. Sooner or later, he has to have one. But you know what? This says a lot about the people who voted for Joe Biden. He had nearly half a century in elected office, no record of accomplishment whatsoever. We saw during the campaign that he was losing it mentally, and he's still elected. It's absolutely outrageous. And it says a lot, not only for Joe Biden, but the people who support him. All right. So next, let's talk about some major white guilt. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. We're making our push for 150,000 subscribers, and we can do it with your help. All right. More and more of these left-wing snowflakes, these woke leftists, are purging their guilt. They're anguishing over their white privilege. This was a trend that started kind of basically with Rosanna Arquette, who got online in 2019 with this tweet. I'm sorry I was born white and privileged. It disgusts me, and I feel so much shame. Oh my gosh, can you believe this? It's just nuts, and it's getting worse and worse. Like I said, Rosanna Arquette kind of got the ball rolling. Now it's a full-blown movement of wokeness. And here's the story. Once associated with Hollywood virtue signalers or those whose racist behavior was exposed by social media or video, apologizing for a white birthday suit has become more mainstream. Former CIA director John Brennan, who currently opines as a paid MSNBC contributor, told the network's audience last week that he was increasingly embarrassed to be a white male. In Amherst, Massachusetts, the town council issued a letter of apology and recommended its members for anti-racism training after a white female counselor attempted to participate in a community safety working group that was drafting alternative policing proposals. This is just outrageous. It's like they're doing everything they can, the left, to wipe out the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. He wanted a colorblind society. Forget about race. Judge people on merit. And here's where I think the problem is. The left realized that those ideas were working. The ideas that I grew up with they were working, and they were working quite well. Now, the whole Martin Luther King legacy, his teachings are under attack. He didn't want to deal with race. Now, it's only about race, and that's it. Here's more. As a presidential candidate in 2019, Robert Beto O'Rourke bemoaned his birth color and privilege, and another Democrat presidential candidate, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York, vowed to make amends for her white privilege. As a white woman who has certainly experienced enormous amounts of white privilege, I travel with a staff member who is black, and I see how she's being treated differently when we walk into a hotel. I've seen it, and it infuriates me, she said. What a mess. This is an absolute mess. These people are wringing their hands, anguishing over their white privilege. Get a clue and forget about race. That's how we bring people together. It used to be a melting pot. It used to be United States of America. Now, all the left wants to do is divide. Rather than coming together and being Americans, it's only about race. You need to hate the members of the other race because they are somehow victimizing you. They are keeping you down. Rather than coming together, they want to split us apart. It's outrageous, but that's the work of the left. Now, let's talk about this group that's upset. It's just, this one makes you scratch your head, folks, because there is a group out there called Pro Life evangelicals for Biden, okay? Pro-life evangelicals for Biden, and they're upset with Joe Biden. They feel betrayed that he let them down, that they were used, and now they're upset about it because they just passed the coronavirus bill, this wasteful $1.9 trillion bill that's loaded with stuff that they don't like. And here's the story. We are very disappointed about the COVID-19 relief package's exclusion of the Hyde Amendment a long-standing bipartisan policy that prevents taxpayer funding for abortion. We're even more upset that the Biden administration is supporting this bill. As pro-life leaders in the evangelical community, we publicly supported President Biden's candidacy 
with the understanding that there would be engagement with us on the issue of abortion and particularly the Hyde Amendment. We feel used and betrayed and have no intention of simply watching these kinds of efforts happen from the sideline. This is unreal, folks. They feel used and betrayed. Back in 2019, Joe Biden made it clear, absolutely clear, where he stood on the Hyde Amendment. I'm an ACLU rights for all voter, and I have one quick question for you, and that is, will you commit to abolishing the Hyde Amendment, which hurts poor women and and yes. women of color? Again. Yes, and by the way, ACLU member, I got a near perfect voting record my entire career. I heard That's you right. did, but I'm glad you just said you would commit to abolishing no, no. the Hyde Amendment. Right now, it, 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 it has to be, it can't stay. So it's pretty clear where Joe Biden stands on this. In addition, as he's calling health care a human right, he lumps abortion into health care. He thinks there should be abortions because it's critical women's health care. Well, look at this. In 2018, the data from Florida, over 70,000 abortions, 0.27% were for saving the life of the woman. 0.27%. If you want to lump in then and go to the next level of health of the woman, health of the mother, that's another 1.48%. So that's a total of 1.75% for the life or the health of the mother. That means 98.25% were not healthcare, had nothing to do with the life or health of the woman. That is not healthcare, folks. That is abortions for convenience. Joe Biden supports that. So let's go back to this group, the one that has pro-life evangelicals for Biden. Pro-life, that's their main issue. That is the issue in their logo, and they're supporting someone who is not pro-life. It makes no sense, and now they're upset about it. Think about that one. Think about how much sense that makes. All right, next I found this interesting. There was a survey that came out asking GOP viewers where they get their news. Where do they turn to for news? Now, number one in the rankings probably won't surprise you. Number two might, and it's interesting to see where GOP voters where they get their news. And here's the story. Newsmax TV is the second most watched television news channel for Republicans, beating major networks like CNN and the news networks of ABC, NBC, and CBS, according to the latest poll from Fabrizio Lee and Associates. The respected Republican pollster found that although Fox News remains the most watched network for GOP voters, with 48% saying they watch weekly, the newcomer Newsmax pulled a remarkable 26% of such viewers. So the survey had some interesting results. One of the things they looked for was of those who left Fox News, because Fox News has taken a lot of heat recently, of those who left Fox News, where did they go? And the biggest beneficiaries were Newsmax and One American News. 32% of those who left Fox News went to Newsmax. Another 28% went to One American News. Really interesting stuff. And here's the ranking, the full ranking of where GOP viewers get their news. Fox News, 48%. Newsmax, 26%. Fox Business, 24%. ABC, 23%. CBS, 22%. NBC, 22%. One American News, 19%. CNN, 13%. CNBC, 11%. MSNBC, 9%. So it's really interesting stuff, but what surprises me of these GOP voters, those who are part of the GOP, going to get their news, 9% of them turn to MSNBC. Now, I look at all sorts of networks. I watch, I go to their websites just to see the balance, see what's being talked about out there. But MSNBC, that is fringe, folks. That is far left. It's just outrageous. And 9% of GOP viewers go to MSNBC as their prime source. Think about that one. Folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.